It's the night before your big physics test and you know you should be asleep, but you can't sleep because you're stressed about your big test. Instead, here you are staying up late watching random videos on YouTube. Well, if you have a big physics test coming up, then you clicked on the right video, friend, because I'm gonna arm you with the best tips and tools that took me from an F in physics to an easy A. Alright, today's test day, but before we get into the three keys we'll unlock massive success for you on your physics test, I actually have a confession for you. I failed physics the first time I took it. It was so embarrassing and I felt like a total failure, but I guess technically I was. I felt like I understood the concepts, but on the test questions I'd just get so turned around. Then I'd start to panic and I'd just write a bunch of stuff hoping to get some pity points from my professor. It didn't work. Then I was given the secret to acing physics when I was least expecting it. My chemistry lab teacher stopped in the middle of class one evening and asked one question. In science classes, what is the difference between an A student and an F student? I had to know the answer. The three keys that he told us changed the entire course of my college career, but do you know what my reaction was the first time I heard them? I rolled my eyes. It just seemed way too easy. But I had struggled on test after test. After I finally gave in and implemented what he said, I went on to not only pass my classes, but I became one of the university's physics and chemistry tutors, and I helped dozens and dozens of students easily pass their classes as well. So here are the three keys that will help anyone to immediately do better on their physics test, even if it's just in a few minutes. Speaking of which, I better go get ready for class. When I was preparing for my test and doing my homework, I felt like I really understood the concepts, so I'd get so frustrated when I'd go to take the test and still get stuck on the problems and not know what to do. I'd end up spending hours watching videos online of people explaining the physics concepts, trying to understand it better, thinking that would help. And it's okay, but it's really not the best use of your time to do better on your test. The number one biggest reason why most students fail their test is this. They would replace the variables in the equation with numbers, thinking somehow that's going to make the math easier, but all that ends up happening is they get lost in the middle of the equation, they have just a bunch of random numbers with no units, so they have no idea which number is which, and then they just plug in the answers hoping that they get the right answer, and often they don't. If you follow this key, you'll know exactly which variable is which, so when you plug in the numbers, you'll be able to have confidence knowing that you're gonna get the right answer without the worry of if you got it right or not. All right, the second key builds off the first one, but hang on just a second. All right, that's much better. So the second key is dimensional analysis. Now, I know that sounds scary, but stay with me. All dimensional analysis means is that you write down what the units are for a number, and then you keep track of that as you do calculations. That's it. So whenever you write equations or convert units, you need to always, always, always make sure that there are units attached to the numbers. I really can't emphasize this enough. So there should never be a number that doesn't have a unit attached to it unless you know absolutely sure that that number doesn't need a unit unit, for instance, index of refraction. Let's see, pancakes, okay, some milk, eggs, one thing of flour, quarter salt, oil, quarter baking powder, and some sugar. My physics professor, how did you get in my house? I heard numbers with no units and I came running. Some milk, one thing of flour, a quarter salt? What? A quarter teaspoon? A quarter tablespoon? A quarter cup salt? I thought I taught you better than this. It's just pancakes. <laughs> oh, it's pancakes today, but what about tomorrow? 
Picture this, you are a nuclear engineer working in a nuclear power plant charged with the safety and well-being of the civilian population while giving us clean and reliable sources of energy, only you don't use dimensional analysis properly. And then we end up with a nuclear meltdown. Or you just fail your test later today. Okay, now get out of my house. Okay, this last key will tie the first two together and help you get as many points as possible on your test. Organization. I've heard so many students joke about getting stuck on a test problem and then their strategy to fix it is essentially what kids do to fool their parents into thinking they ate more food at their dinner than they did. Now little Albert, if you want a physics demonstration before bed, you need to be sure to eat all of your dinner. And you won't fool me by stirring around your food trying to make it look like you ate more than you did. I see plenty of that when I grade my physics students' tests. They don't know what to do on a problem, so they end up writing a bunch of random nonsense numbers and equations, trying to somehow fool me into thinking that they know more than they actually did if their papers look really busy. It doesn't ever work out for them, and it won't work out for you either. This is the exact opposite of what you want to do. You want your grader to know exactly what you were thinking and doing on your test. I know it sounds scary and some of you are probably joking and saying, well, I don't know what I was thinking and doing on the test, but you want to make their job as easy as possible when grading your test. They have a whole stack of papers to grade and they don't want to go through a bunch of garbage on your test question trying to figure out what you were thinking and doing. Would you? And when they see that you got the wrong answer, they'll assume that you didn't know what you were doing on your test give you a zero, and then go back to watching their episode of Big Bang Theory. So let's bring this all together into a step-by-step -step list of exactly what you need to do. Step number one, write all the variables from the question into a list, including the variable that the problem wants you to solve for with a question mark next to it so you know what you're trying to find. Step number two, find and write down the equation that matches your list of variables, including the one that you need to solve for, and just write it down without doing anything to it. Just let your grader know that you knew the correct equation to use. Step number three, now use key number one from the beginning of the video to solve the formula that you wrote down for the variable that you need using only the variables, no numbers yet. Step number four, after you've solved the formula for the variable that you need, now use key number two, dimensional analysis, to plug in your list of variables into the equation you solved for, including their units. Step number five, now that you have the formula solved, you've plugged in the numbers into the correct places with their units, now double check yourself. Make sure all the units cancel appropriately to the units that you need for the answer. If they cancel out correctly, now you can be confident that your answer is gonna be correct. Plug in the numbers into your calculator, and you have your answer. There have been times on my test where I ended up with the wrong number because I accidentally put in a number wrong into the calculator or I forgot a parenthesis or something simple. But because my grader saw it, I knew exactly what I was doing all throughout my question and they could follow my thought process, I ended up getting most of the points on the question still, even though I ended up getting the wrong answer. Okay, it's test time. Good luck, and if you want more tips on how to do better in your physics class, click on this video right here. Hurry, before the video's over.